Ivan Katz here, and behind me, my collection of Ovation guitars and instruments. I'm going to talk about my guitar collection and talk a bit about Ovation's history. Let's get started. Well, I'm going to start the video with the guitar that really started it for me, and it was this one right here. I got my first Ovation. This is a custom balladeer, but it's Korean made, and I got it in 1988, and uh, it was present for my parents. Very happy to get it. I've always wanted an ovation at that point, and uh, they just stood out to me. You know, the this one is super shallow cutaway, and just the shape of it, along with the fact that you could, of course, plug it in, you know, play it acoustic, electrically, and that sort of thing. I just, I just really liked it. Like the shape, like the way they felt when you played them. I like the sound. And people like Paul Simon played them. Of course, Brian May from Queen, Kevin Cronin. Uh, I remember the New Bohemians, E. Raquel, her band. They had one, a white custom balladeer, similar to this one. So I really liked those. That was in the uh, What I Am video, actually. But like I said, Paul Simon, Greg Lake, so many people played these. And of course, it was really Glenn Campbell who put these on the map for the rock and roll world. He was a Grammy award-winning singer. He had his own variety show and he played the guitars on that show. Uh, I guess his were similar looking to this one I would say and of course they have 12 strings. This is the old design there and then they kind of adopted this one later on so I have a bit of a history coming across here, the tornado here. This is uh, an electric from the 60s actually, but look, they had that headstock design there. So it's just a really cool electric guitar in this case, but just um, really cool instruments to me. And uh, that's why I've collected them over the years. Even my mandolin is, of course, just like the other ones. And uh, well, the Elite models here, they have a certain number of holes, and uh, that's what makes them cool. More on these in a second, but uh, yes, Ovation guitars, always love them. Charles Kamen, he was a helicopter designer, and uh, he loved to do that, and then he was successful, and he said, you know what, I want to build some guitars with my special technology, so we got a team together. And he really started to work on them. They had a shiny back, but the round back was there really from the start. And uh, earlier ones, you know, they had the uh, kind of tone right here in the volume. And uh, this, like I said, this is a 12 string. And uh, this one is actually very cool. Signed by Greg Lake. I got Greg Lake to sign this one um, at a concert. And uh, that was really nice of him to sign it. Him playing Still You Turn Me On, uh, such a cool performance. And, uh, you know, he's always used these throughout the years. Uh, Dave Mason, that song that he did back in uh, about 1980, that was just a great song. He also played a black ovation, sort of like a custom balladeer. Paul Simon, of course. Melissa Etheridge, uh, Nancy Wilson from Heart. You know, there's signature models out there. Like I said, Brian May. I remember him. I think he strummed like 39 on that from the Night at the Opera album. What a great album. And uh, just, you know, so I see these guitars. I'm so happy to have this collection because they just, it's intangible what they do to you. And uh, as my collection has grown over the years, well, you know, I've gotten some really nice ones. And, uh, Again, I sometimes I get them signed. This one actually is signed by uh, Willie Nelson. <laughs> and I uh, got a hold of that one. I have one more signed guitar. I'm going to throw this one up on the uh, bed here. And that's the thing. Uh, another thing. Look at this one. Cracks. Uh, yeah, this guitar, I used to play on the street with this guitar more years ago than I would like to mention. And you could go outside, inside, cold to hot. I have put this guitar on a plane many, many times, traveled and played gigs all over the place, down in the islands, 
had a regular gig down there, so hot, cold, cold, hot. Um, the airlines wrecked this guitar, they broke the case, and uh, I got a lot of cases over here, as you see, because I stacked them up when I'm just doing my video here. But, um, yeah, they even broke the case, and uh, so the airline ended up paying for this guitar. But my point is, is that this thing is just a workhorse, and it stays in tune. You can go from a cold climate, get on a plane, check it, and then get to your destination in the tropics, say, and you take the guitar out, and it's in tune. I just um, strummed this mandolin. I hadn't played this mandolin in ages. It's in tune. You know, things like that. It's just really cool. This is an Ovation Ultra, the one signed by Willie Nelson there. Um, I got some pacemakers, uh, a pinnacle, and uh, this is actually a real Connecticut, Hartford, Connecticut made um, custom balladeer, and I was really happy to find this one because, you know, when I was younger and my parents got me this one, of course, that's the one I wanted. You can see the difference because the neck here has the dot inlays here, and of course it says made in Korea inside, and uh, this one, of course, is the real deal American guitar, and that, of course, says made in Connecticut, so yeah, it's, it's really cool to uh, finally have this one, uh, again, with the nice neck there with the more adornments and that sort of thing of the American guitars. And uh, they went through a few owners. In fact, uh, Fender owned them, and uh, they were going to get rid of the Connecticut factory and just make them all overseas. A lot of them are made overseas as celebrities in the lower ends. Like this bass here, that's a celebrity. Even though it looks like an elite, it is a celebrity. And uh, those were made overseas and things like that But um, to keep costs down. But always the nicer instruments are made in America. And uh, so there you go. This one is very, very nice. It's actually an Ovation 1981, the anniversary, 1657-7. And so it's a very special guitar. It's in really nice shape. Really, really clean. And uh, yes, definitely very ornate with its finish level and the detail. And uh, it even has some nice inputs for regular XLR cables and things like that. So you can actually play with it in gigs and that sort of thing. And it's really easy to hook up in clubs so that's a good thing next to the base here we have a ovation signed by bon jovi actually i actually traded a guitar somebody wanted one of my acoustics and uh i was interested in this so i went ahead and did a swap and uh of course yeah bon jovi's famous especially for the 12 string wanted dead or alive that sort of thing and the double necks, those are really cool that they played in the glam 80s. I was never really into the hair bands that much, not even Bon Jovi that much, but I do collect signed guitars, as you can tell, so I thought it was pretty cool. And uh, moving on to these. This one is the first collector series in 1982. Even the one before is the anniversary in 81. This is the actual first collector series, 1982, and what they would do later is they would put the year sometimes right here. So if it was in 86, it would say 86. And they did 12 strings, and they did 6 strings in their special edition guitars too. And I really, really love it. Special electronics in this one too. The finish level on this one is quite nice. And the inlays, everything about it. Even the matching headstock there, so cool. Special tuners on this one. These are more normal. And uh, special tuners over here too. But, uh, so, some are deep and some are shallow, but these are more deep bowls here. This one is extremely special and uh, it is actually Atomus, that's the top top of the line, basically, of all ovations. 
and this one is an 1881 NBBG, basically blue green, and it's just got this beautiful binding on the side, and of course the elite sound holes, and uh, man, this one's great. I was so happy to get this one. They aren't cheap, of course, and uh, really, really nice to play and just nice to look at. So blue is kind of my color, so these two together, stunning, I think, and uh, yes, I'm very happy with my collection here. So really, really special guitars, special to me and I think special to a lot of people and uh, a great history too from helicopter engineer to guitar maker and uh, just really really special and uh, very nicely engineered guitars. It was actually Glenn Campbell who said hey make it a bit lighter they're a bit heavy and so that's where they came up with the super shallow bowl and really the rest is history. I've always liked the super shallow bowl and the cutaway uh, if I'm going to play the guitar, I like it to be cut away because it's just easier, even though that 82 over there, Collector's Edition, is not. I still love the color and that sort of thing. I remember they had finishes like Barn Board, and it was kind of like a gray-blue color. They even had them in purple. I mean, there's so many cool special Collector's Editions. There's some from the 90s that look kind of like, you know, sort of hairband guitars, but I, I still think it's cool. And uh, they've just got a look that just, I think, really makes you desire these guitars. So yes, they were basically controlled by the original owners until 2007 and then uh, they were taken over KMCM Music Corps and uh, basically the Ovation brand then in 2008 was sold and Fender owned it and that's when they you know, they, they lasted a while, but 2014, they closed that factory in Connecticut, and that's just terrible. So, I'm really, really glad that uh, after they did that, well, another company came along, and that was the Drum Workshop. And they went ahead and reopened that factory, so you can still get the really nicely made ovation guitars that are produced in America, in Hartford, Connecticut, as they should be. And uh, for big fans of ovation, that's just such a good thing. I'm so happy that they're keeping the tradition going. And uh, yes, ovation guitars, I think very desirable. And uh, I'm pretty happy with my collection here. Now I think I'll strum a couple for you so you can hear how they sound. So this is the first one I ever had. It really feels like home to me. The action is great. It stays in tune. I did not touch the tuning and I haven't touched this guitar in at least months. So it's pretty cool here. <laughs> sort of the same guitar but this one is a custom balladeer made in America <laughs> okay so here's the deep bowl 1615 12 string and actually I didn't tune this either and I just drummed it it's actually still Pretty good. It might be a hair off, but I'm just going to leave it because this is how it was and I haven't played it in ages. Okay, so here's the anniversary and uh, I think you'll definitely like the way this one sounds. Okay, the 82 Collector's Edition, first Collector's Edition ever. And last, but certainly not least, the Adamus, Adamus 
Call it what you will. It's beautiful. <laughs> Thanks for watching this video on my Ovation guitar collection and the history of Ovation. Check out all my other music videos, Free Your Mind music video has my entire guitar collection. Well, it's not quite up to date, but uh, I have quite a collection, so check that out, Free Your Mind, Ivan Katz, and you'll find that video. Lots of original music videos and covers out there elsewhere on YouTube as well. Check out, of course, my Drive and Ivan car reviews and car videos. Just Google Drive and Ivan in any car. Check out my disc golf videos and like, subscribe, comment, and share please. Also follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Ivan Katz.